Hey everyone and welcome back to episode 3 of the perfect single player storage series. Today we're going to be taking a look at items. We're going to be going through some of the item choices, um, how we're going to have them in certain layouts, what kind of halls we're going to be assigning them to. But before we do that, I want to go back again to the previous episode where we left off and we spoke about this hall here. I said I made some final decisions on the tech we were going to use in the halls and since then I've had a little bit of a change of heart. And I've also got some more smart people involved in making things a little bit more efficient and just generally better designed. So let's go have a look at that tech. So I think the first thing I really want to take a good look at is the box display. Last week I said I had made some adjustments to the box display that I was super happy with. However, as I mentioned, someone smarter than me someone some of you might know, Boyan, had a good look at the box display and after I explained some of the issues that we had with the original designs and some of the things that I wanted to achieve that I couldn't without making it big, he put his big old brain to use and decided to make those adjustments. Initially he just came up with making the box display a little bit easier, smaller and less complicated, which is this design that he came up with here. Generally a really good design, uses quite a few uh, quite a few less blocks, doesn't use the honey and slime on the side over there, just like this is my original design that he, he uh, emulated and changed. You can see he's changed a few things over, made it quite a lot simpler and smaller. So actually that was already a POG design choice that he made. But when he was messing with it, he said, he asked the question, uh, that was something that I had already considered, but just didn't care enough about. Which is that when you have a box, if I can try and get a box here for you. If I place a box with an item in there, let's say there's no items in there, it will display the box as so. What happens now is if the box up the top here is empty and I place another box in there, it's going to unlock the uh, redstone torch here and just pl place a box in the dispenser. And let's say, for example, I never really have any extra boxes in a slice and I just keep placing them in one by one. They'll all just eventually build up in the dispenser here. Not a terrible idea, but this is kind of slightly against what I was looking for. But again, my idea is that these are going to be used for box storages. So generally speaking, when I first load them up, which is uh, an issue that can be overlooked, if I go ahead and chuck in a few boxes in here, you do get one in the dispenser, but once that's gone, you no longer have this problem anyway. You'll see it won't have any in the dispenser and just one in the hopper. So for me, I was like, you know what? It's not going to be a big enough of a problem, so I'll ignore it and um, it shouldn't be an issue. But he still felt it was a bit jank. And honestly, I agree with him. It is a little bit jank, but not jank in the way that it's unusable or stupid or not a good design. Just not the best of the best. Now I explained to him that I tried to make one that kind of rectified this issue a little while ago for the Ambition Craft server. It was a little bit different because it used the floor display instead and this actually kind of solved the issue. Again he actually mentioned one of the issues that it would that would still occur for it. So ultimately after messing around with it a little bit Boyan actually ended up coming up with this design here. So the first thing you're going to notice on this one that it's slightly more expensive than the one that I said I was going to finalize and use on the previous design. And actually, it's not a lot more expensive. It just kind of looks a little bit more expensive. In this design here, I'm using roughly about eight observers. And on the one that Boyan designed, we used nine. Yes, one more observer per slice, but no big deal. Also uses one more piston per slice, but again, no big deal, especially when you consider the functionality of this. It's actually a super smart design using what he calls dueling pistons, which honestly, that alone is a great name. So good enough reason to use it or you would happen that would happen differently on this version here is if we input a box detects the box and places it out for you now what happens here if i place a box in the chest it can't it doesn't activate the system so what happens here is that this stays in the double chest accessible to the player at all times great design now i thought there might be some issues with this but some pretty much all of them he's already rectified if i remove this box even though there's not one in the hopper, it will double pulse to bring that one box through from the double chest, through the hopper, and unlock everything enough to bring it back on display again. I've tested pretty much all reliability issues that might be considered with something like this, and as far as I can tell, there shouldn't be any. So very POG design from Boyan, and um, honestly, considering what you get for it, it's definitely worth the slightly extra costs. 
but generally speaking it's still within the same footprint and size design of the other ones in fact as you can see from the block display here it's one block shorter than this design here so we're looking at an even more compact design now the reason i'm showing you this is because unless something drastic changes and someone comes up with something so much more better than this which i pretty much doubt because i mean at this point there's not really anything to improve on i'm going to be saying that this is 100 percent the design we're going to be going with and i know i said that the last episode but also boyan got involved so i can't say no to something that's considerably better however what i was considering is that when i do bring out the world download for all of these things i'll probably include all of the box displays that we've gone through so everyone can just kind of make a decision on what they want to do the second amendment I ended up making was to the loading system. So I went through the designs last time of the loading system here and I ultimately came to the conclusion that I was going to choose this one here. It used double locking, you know, it had to be global locked on two separate sides. It was small, it was good good use, used some kind of smart mechanics here and I was pretty happy with it. However, since making this, I realized there was a bit of an issue with it, which is that the box being displayed here was never going to be accessible and i said in the last video that i was okay with that and ultimately after thinking about it i decided i'm not okay with that i do want that box to be accessible because there's going to be cases where i'm running low on an item and i want that box to come out so i had to really scratch my head on this one and think about what i had to do so i went through the storage uh storage tech archives and had a little look around to see if there's any designs nothing that i particularly was happily sold on but one that gave me a really good idea that was this system here. This system has many advantages, which I never really, never really thought about before. And the main system advantage of this is that it's basically entirely hopper locked, except for this one here, which has to not be entirely hopper locked and less global, um, because it's going to rely on input. Everything here is hopper locked by by default. So no matter what happens, I don't even need to globally ho hopper lock any of this. The whole system basically stays locked. There is going to be a, a locking system for the uh, for the shulker box input system there, but we'll get back to that in a minute. The system will basically keep everything locked and gives us a few extra perks. First of all, it's considerably smaller than those ones over there. It does get a bit bigger once we include a few extra features, but you can see here it's all unlocked enough to bring the items into this section here. But one of the issues I had with this one here was... It keeps all of the items in the bottom hopper over here. It doesn't keep it unlocked long enough, even though I've used a double comparator over here, which is the reason why I use double comparators, was to have a slight delay to let this go through. Now, what I've actually noticed from all of this is that what you can do is just add another hopper underneath it, and that should basically suck out the item from underneath. Unfortunately, you then have an unlocked hopper. Here's a little look at the combined system of my previous top loader combined with Boyan's box display at the bottom and get an understanding of what exactly we're dealing with. If I move over here, this is an adjusted version with my new box display and Boyan's loader at the bottom. Ignore the soul fire for now, we're just burning boxes because they kept flying everywhere and I was worried they might end up somewhere that I don't want them to be. The advantages of this system here again is that it's fully, uh, fully locked. If I do grab myself a box from somewhere, you can see in this system there is no box on display here and nothing in the chests. So I go ahead and put that in and fill it up. Box is broken, all the hoppers are unlocked and the box ends up in display at the bottom here. Everything is still basically hopper locked except for this one hopper which is for the shulker box input line and this one at the top here. These two are locked, all of these are locked and using this mechanism here where I just pulled the, the extra uh, shulker box from the top hopper. I just need to delay the time between unlocking this hopper and this uh, leaving this hopper locked or whatever. This, this hopper can stay locked permanently. Just to get a clearer look on how the system would work. You can see the compost is just pulsed up and down. That gives the, the option to break the box. And again, everything stays locked permanently. Now I'm using a solid state here as opposed to toggle states. This whole system only uses a single toggle state, which is this one right here, which I think is pretty good overall. I was going to try and get rid of this toggle state altogether, but to be fair, it doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue enough to want to do all that and make the system probably quite a bit bigger. The only issue I had with this is that this slime situation here was a little bit bigger. So I tried to explore some other options and came up with this system here. Unfortunately, this uses a toggle state using this observer and also comes with its own problems which is that you can end up dro uh, locking these droppers which ends up messing up the signal if you happen to power this um 
hopper at the wrong time and try and unlock it whilst the box is getting broken it does unfortunately lock the droppers and then when you try and unlock it it will end up double powering this observer here i can actually show you this working in a way where i do something like this if i end up breaking this now you can see this is broken this is already in the wrong state if i try and refill another box here you can see how it triple powers eventually sorted itself out unfortunately it can be in a different state so i did like this because it kept the thing a little bit smaller and avoided using the honey and slime but to be honest with you i don't think it's that big of a deal so we'll probably just stick to this one here i've already tested the tileability of all of this these slices are two slices uh, of the same ones that i just showed you a copy of over there everything seems to be working absolutely fine there's no tileability issues and still seems relatively compact when you think about what you're dealing with in terms of functionality. What I do think is kind of funny about the system is that I have labeled it the perfect single player storage, but honestly, something like this is still very good and very useful when you, even when used in a server setting. It has all the functionalities of everything you want from a server. The one thing I forgot to show you guys is the extra feature that I wanted all along. So you have the box on display here. You want to access this box. What I can do now is press the button for the slice. You'll see this light come on on the side here. This is just a representation. You can replace this uh, redstone block with anything else. You can see the box is broken and ends up on display, which means we can manually release it. The reason another box wasn't added here was because we ran out of them. What's interesting about this system here is I tried to test for jankability. Now, let's say, for example, you try and release this box here and it doesn't actually have any items in there. Box will still come on display. But it has no items in there. This is not an issue. You have two options here. You can either break the box yourself if you really prefer. Or just wait until the next box comes along in the system. This is going to break this box anyway because it has no signal strength to stop it from being broken. And the box that you need will actually be displayed instead. That pretty much covers everything that's happened between now and the last episode, all the advancements that we've made with the tech based on this slice. I kind of want to now move on to the next subject of this episode, which is going to be items. I've been spending some time going through item lists to see what it is exactly that I want when it comes to displays, chest halls, or even MIS if that comes into consideration. So I've spent a couple days at work where I've had some downtime going through the item list to see what it is I do and don't want. I wanted to remove us for a minute from the Minecraft world to go and have a little look at items themselves. Now, as I mentioned, I've been spending some time going through the item list that I found uh, on the Storage Check Discord and kind of assigning things that I want to go into certain slices. Now, this is probably a good time to talk about the choices of slices that I'm going to be using. You can already see here we've got some items in MIS. We've got some stuff in chest halls. If we do scroll further down uh, on the list here, you'll see bulk. A lot of these items are a mixture of bulk which you're already aware of which is going to be the uh chalker displays we've got chest tools which is pretty self-explanatory we're going to go for chest tools we're going to choose the type uh very shortly so we'll have a little look at some of the options for that and we've also got some items in mis now you might have remembered me saying that i was going to try and avoid using mis um if you have a look through the item list you'll kind of see the kind of things i'm using mis for mis is going to be used more so for special items you can see here things like diamond, diamond ore, dragon heads, enchanted golden apples, enchanting tables. More so items that you would have very few of, but are somewhat valuable that you want to assign in some, some form. Now, as to whether that's actually going to be MIS, am I going to put it in a slightly different format? I haven't totally decided that yet, but as of right now, just for the sake of convenience, I've gone ahead and labeled it as MIS. Again, chest tools, you can see all the items for, and then we had all the stuff in bulk. If we go have a little look at statistics, you can have a better idea of what we're actually going to be assigning and how many slices we're going to need. Currently, as it stands, I've got down bulk items as 126, chest tools is uh, 323, and MIS items is 21. You might be thinking 323 slices of chest tool is kind of a lot to deal with, but actually when you consider that one slice of chest tools actually contains uh, eight double chests, or eight item assignments should i say it's actually not that much actually equates to significantly less than the amount of bulk items these are some of the choices that i've made you can pause the video and go and look, have a little look through it but ultimately i think looking through a spreadsheet doesn't necessarily make too clear of an idea of what we're looking for 
you can see here some of the more obvious answers are we're going to have like things like uh, slabs, stairs, all that kind of stuff within chest tools, just for the convenience of having them local to other blocks of its type. But again, looking at a spreadsheet doesn't really give us a good indication. So I want to kind of move away from the spreadsheet and over back in to the Minecraft world again. And that does indeed bring us to this overview here. This is another thing I downloaded from the Storage Check Discord. It was an archive of all the items in Minecraft 117. Now, I don't know if there's a huge change in items from 117 to 118. I believe, actually, if I'm not mistaken, there's none or like very few item changes between the two, two versions. So I'm not too bothered about trying to figure those out. In addition to that, I'm going to allow for some leeway in all of this anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We do have a little closer look here. We can see there's actually some items missing from this table here. Uh, one of them mainly being a dispenser. That's actually a dropper in front of us. There's actually a couple more that I've picked up on as I went through it. And, you know, uh, th those are things that I've already taken care of. If we have a little closer look down here, this also has some repeating items, e.g. the Nylium for, the, uh, for, for one example. And yeah, this isn't the best. In fact, this whole row here, the Nylium and then all the log types here are also been repeated besides the uh, warp variants. So there's a, this is a little bit drank, but it was the only one that was available at the time I was making the video. So this, this will have to do. If there's anything I've missed, I'll probably pick it up during the time when I'm actually building the storage system anyway. So it's no big deal. Now, this is all great, but obviously this is not a representation of things going into slices. So let's turn this into this. This is probably more of an accurate representation of the items or things that should be going to assign slices. So if we have a better look over here, we've got all the stuff that I wanted to potentially keep in bulk. Now, if I'm speaking with complete transparency here, this is probably not going to end up being the final versions because as I laid down all the items that I wanted to have in bulk, I realized what I was really doing here and probably not making the smartest of decisions, but we'll get back to that in a minute. So as it stands, this is currently all the items that will remain in the bulk storage. This will be all the items that I wanted to assign to chest storage. And this is all the items I wanted to assign to MIS or valuable storage as it will be henceforth be known. As to what how valuable storage will actually end up being and what kind of form it will end up taking at the moment is MIS. We'll see if that changes or not in the future. Having a good look at it, I think some of it is quite clear as to a good decision being made for me so much more so it's the chest tool part of all of it i think the chest tools are pretty much down to a t as to what i'm gonna have uh in terms of things i want to actually assign and that actually makes sense chest tools make the most sense to me at the moment the things that make the least amount of sense is the um the box storage here there's a lot of stuff here that probably doesn't need to be here a lot of it that i've thought about that that it feels like it does make sense to actually have so from all the items that we looked at previously this is what actually remains from all of the the layout that we saw from earlier on now you can see there's still quite a hefty amount of items left over but if we do have a closer look at it some of it actually makes sense as to why it's been left behind one of the examples here i find is the candles and the banners both colored banners and candles are generally not things that i tend to use too much of candles i don't think i'll ever really ever use any of and banners, if I ever do use them, maybe will be in smaller variants. I think the same can actually be said for candles here. So in this case, is if I ever do need some of those, it will only ever be a few at a time. It doesn't make sense to actually assign them a storage. Taking a look at the row in front of the banners, we've got things like all of the things that you get from a warped, um, warped tree farm or even a shifting floor farm. A lot of them are things that you don't end up really ever needing. Not, not any of them that are useful for building. You've got some glow like into the left. Um, you've got some of the grass variant and then you've also got uh, some things that you wouldn't really ever even really keep I forget what this is even called now that I think about it dead bushes I don't even know if these are obtainable in Minecraft I thought you get sticks when you broke them but anyway these are things that I don't ever really end up needing so again junk items um, glowing item frames not something I'd probably end up keeping too much of I think I'm more of an item frame guy than a glow item frame guy if I'm being totally honest with you having a little look over here you have all of the all of the tree things tree associated things you got all the sapling types and all the leaf types number one if i ever made a leaf farm i'd probably end up keeping most of them local if not i'd probably end up assigning them into bulk if i ever made a tree farm uh, if i ever made a leaf farm specifically i'd probably end up harvesting quite a few of them in which case i'd end up assigning them into bulk but as of right now i can't see that anytime in the near future where i'd have a considerable amount that I'd ever want to store somewhere 
at most i might need a few a few of them for like a few smaller builds and stuff in which case i'll probably just harvest them as they go along the same goes for saplings these will probably be kept locally at tree farms so i don't think there's any reason for me to store them anywhere in storage the interesting part was the dead coral leaves or the coral fans whatever they're they're called or whatever they're assigned to they're never really a useful for anything other than tnt duping and as time has gone on i've actually started moving away from entity tnt dupers which is usually the ones that generally speaking use the dead coral uh, dead coral fans i don't really use them anymore the ones that i'm using more so in farms now don't contain any dead coral fans or any entities so i don't really see any point in having any of these things same goes for the blocks and the dead versions too the crystals are a bit of a weird one because as far as i'm concerned you don't really ever end up getting these specific blocks you only end up getting the crystal variant themselves the crystal variant i believe are really archived in the chest storage so that should be good or actually it might be in the valuable storage so i'm not really too bothered about that the dripstone leaves um the dripstone sorry i don't think there's really too much use for them for me either at the moment i'm not assigning them to anything again i'm probably going to leave a few slices of everything um for expandability anyway so if that ever changes in my mind i'll change that as well as we roll on over you kind of see all of the food food types or things associated with food that we have um stored over here a lot of it we're not ever going to need i've already stored cooked pork chops which is something that we will harvest other than that i've also got uh golden carrots also stored into the system there those will actually be food sources that we'll end up needing all the raw variants are completely useless dried kelp is also useless for me the only other thing that's really worth considering is pie because you end up using it for composters because they always give you one signal strength at a time regardless of how many you compost so everything here particularly useless um if i ever do end up using glow berries i'm sure i'll probably end up adding that into storage too as we go down here snowballs leather uh bricks all of these things for me at the moment seem a little bit useless maybe the leather and the bricks may change at some point but again not useful eggs are useless sewing sacks are useless most of these things i probably keep locally at farms so i'm not really too bothered there's a lot of stuff here that includes that's included for brewing and i don't ever end up th thinking that i'm going to end up storing any of these in storage if i ever end up keeping these they'll be stored in the brewer themselves anything at x will probably be kept locally at the farms as we stroll along here i'm not going to run through every single item but again these are either going to be kept locally at farms or things i don't ever want to end up storing at the moment i found zero use uh, for the lightning rod i'm sure maybe at some point there'll be some use for it as of right now completely useless all of the remaining ores or the turtle scoots i won't be needing anyway and as we have a little look at crops, all of these things will probably be, again, be kept locally at farms. Maybe bamboo will be useful at some point. I might add that to the list there, if I'm completely honest. But maybe bamboo does need to be kept at storage. And whilst we're at it, I think I'll go ahead and get wither roses. Though I had a disastrous episode of me trying to gather wither roses. I'm sure this will be useful at some point when I do end up fixing it again. Trap chests uh, are pretty useless to me. I only ever use them once in a while levers oh that shouldn't be here that should actually be in one of the storage sections so i'll go ahead and take that that should be with the rest of the bulk redstone stuff and i don't think i've ever used a daylight sensor for anything all of the ore variants that are not diamond are going to be kept here because again i don't see them to be useful red sand i almost never use all of this stuff here again i don't see me using unless specific scenarios and i never really have gold blocks diamond blocks or <laughs> netherite blocks at a bulk enough where i'm going to need them in storage gold is probably the only thing that will be useful but those will probably be either kept at the gold farm or be kept in storage at piglin bartering i haven't really used tinted glass much since it's been released so i don't see me wanting to use or store much of this but maybe i'll add this to to the chest storage because it might be useful at some point soul soil pumpkins jack-o-lanterns carved pumpkins clay and hay bales all items i left behind because i found them com to be completely useless and not things i probably want to end up storing that's pretty much the breakdown of all my item choices these may or may not change over time um, i'll probably make decisions you know th that will last a little bit longer over time as i figure out the storage system one thing i definitely want to do is to clear out bulk storage over here because as it stands right now i don't see me wanting to store this many items in bulk it seems like bulk is going to end up being too big and overwhelming in size if i do one of the the options i had originally was because as you can see here a lot of this is color related i could actually get rid of 48 slices altogether by just giving colors its own separate bulk storage or like a separate section for it that ends up decreasing things a lot in fact what i think we're going to do we're going to go ahead and turn this 
into this. Now, this is probably a little bit more of an accurate representation of what I would want box storage to essentially look like. There's still some things here which are a little bit sus that may or may not make it into there. One of them being the bone block. Now, the reason that's there is because obviously when I transport bone meal down from any farms, e.g. the with a skeleton farm, I usually compress down bones into bone meal and then into bone blocks because it's the easiest form of travel. So that's why I thought bone blocks would be a good idea to actually keep in box storage. But then again, I also have bone meal here as well. So maybe that doesn't deserve to be there. It's all a little bit questionable at the moment. Very, very head scratchy, but I'm still working on it. But I've actually brought most of this down by a considerable size. A lot of the stuff that I had there has actually been moved over to this section here mainly. Um, you can see the dyes are up there with the uh, other color stuff. But basically everything else is down here now. All the extra blocks that I thought that was supposed to be up there didn't make sense. Like crying obsidian for one. Like I don't know why I would need crying obsidian in bulk storage. So it didn't really make sense. So I got rid of that. And then um, yeah some of the other stuff ended up over here. Gold ingots and uh, the um, copper ingots. Stuff like that. I didn't really see a big point of it. Even like bone blocks. like Or sorry bones themselves. I don't, I don't really generally have anything in the form of bones it usually comes in the form of bone meal or bone blocks so again pretty useless probably doesn't even really deserve to be in here ultimately but we'll, we'll see how that goes so everything's kind of been shifted over most things are over here now um the uh the dies are at the top over there and i think this is pretty good in terms of size still a, a fair amount of blocks that are actually going to end up on display i was thinking about dropping some of these redstone um items off into you know, maybe not having it in, in this format, but I don't know. I kind of like to... One of the reasons why I wanted to build box storage was mainly for redstone stuff. So I think I'm going to probably keep all of this. And, you know, I'll, I'll just make sure I, I stock up on everything over here for the future. So I think we're going to go ahead and end the episode there. I think we pretty much covered most of the stuff that we needed to, to consider in, in this episode regarding blocks and where they're going to be stored. I'm going to have a little think about this whole thing over time, make sure I got all of my decisions correctly. And as far as I can see right now, I think this is all looking pretty good. Now, as far as everything's concerned at this point, I think it's really going to be mostly a, a kind of like a process of figuring it all out. But I think the next episode is going to be the one that's particularly interesting. You see... The reason why this took a little bit longer than I would have wanted it to, I had a few things in mind that I wanted to run through. I was waiting for some things to be done. Those things have been done now. So in the next episode, we're going to be talking about a much more interesting subject than items. And we're going to be talking about input and output, both the most essential parts of the whole storage system. I think it's going to be quite a bit of fun. A lot of little random little tech that's going to be involved in it. So I think you're going to enjoy that episode. So I hope you join me on that one. Uh, thanks again for watching. Like and subscribe, all that nonsense. If you made it to the end, big pog to you. I'll see you on the next episode.